Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so today I will uh, I will introduce uh, the basic concept, basically, of the other correction uh, contained in the so-called DSP plus U and plus U plus D uh, approaches. So I prepared. Uh, uh, let me take this off. Okay. I prepared an introductory slide on uh, uh, density functional theory, but I don't think that is a uh, after all you see, you saw these days, I don't think uh, it works. Uh, okay. I don't think there is uh, much need after all you see, what you saw in the first day uh, to review this. Uh, the basic uh, the basics basically of the DFT theory. Uh, the point I wanted to make here is that uh, um, basically, uh, in, um, the one that you already know that uh, the, the, the exchange correlation functional uh, is something whose uh, exact uh, form nobody knows, uh, and uh, some people start to believe in that nobody will be known, no, no, that will never be known. The, the exact one. So we need to deal with approximations uh, and these approximation can occasionally have uh, serious uh, uh, consequences for the way we describe uh, real materials using this function here. And uh, today um, we are dealing with some of these uh, uh, inaccuracy uh, that uh, brought about uh, the, the approximations that we use uh, to uh, Constructed this change correlation functional and potential. So, in order to illustrate this uh, and how the, this other correction can, uh, can correct these, uh, these approximate uh, um, results that we obtain because of this approximation, uh, I've uh, uh, selected a class of material uh, that uh, um, are being considered for the cathode of uh, rechargeable lithium batteries. For, for which uh, the, the, the localization problem uh, is particularly important. So for which electronic localization is important if we want uh, a quantitative description of this, uh, of this system. So, um, so we will see that uh, because of using the approximate exchange correlation functional, the description of this material that uh, we can uh, we can uh, obtain from a standard DFT functional is not uh, is not very accurate uh, from the quantitative and sometimes also qualitative point of view. Okay. Um, the specific class of material I selected is the one that we have been working with uh, collaborators uh, in the last years, and it's uh, lithium transition metal phosphates uh, that have this unit cell here, and um, of course, lithium needs to be to be able to get in and out of this material uh, reversibly with the least damage as possible to the structure so that the battery lasts longer. But this is not a problem that we will deal with today. We'll mostly focus on the energetics, okay? And uh, in particular, uh, with the fact that lithium uh, is attracted from the anode to the cathode when we use the battery by uh, the the, the Basically, the lower chemical potential in the in the cathode compared to the anode. Okay, and this can be associated also with uh, with a shift in the in the transition metal oxidation state. So, if you do the math, uh, you balance the charge uh, for the uh, for example for the um, um, delithiated material MPO4, and then for the fully delithiated one, lithium uh, transition metal PO4, uh, uh, you basically realize immediately that the transition metal had to switch between two plus and three plus, actually between three plus and two plus. Okay, so while you're using the battery, the transition metal is switching between three plus and two plus. So if you want to capture the energetic aspect very well, and you want to be predictive in your simulation. Uh, you have to uh, make sure that you describe well the difference between two plus and three plus for the transition level. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let me use a cartoon to in order to remind you this. Uh, um, I will use this color for the two plus form of the transition metal and this color, the starter color for the two plus okay, state. 
So you see when lithium is in the structure, the transition metal is two plus because lithium is providing the extra electrons to the oxygen. And uh, when uh, there's no lithium in the structure, uh, the transition metal has to provide electrons, so it's in two plus, okay? So um, what happens in between uh, is also very relevant, uh, but can be uh, quite difficult to, to catch, okay? Um, what happens exactly uh, actually uh, is a uh, is a uh, can be inferred basically from uh, from the experiment. So you see here a plot showing uh, the trend of um, the average voltage of the material as a function of a little content, basically on the chart, the level of chart of the battery. So you see a nice plateau, which is also uh, making uh, the the iron uh, member of this family. A commercially uh, viable uh, material for these kind of purposes because it guarantees that you can use the battery more or less at the same voltage uh, independently of the level of charge. Yeah. Um, but this also means that microscopic, microscopically, um, basically, um, during the charge or discharge of the battery, there's no new material forming. Okay, so. Basically, microscopically, what happens while lithium is being inserted or uh, extracted from the material is that the lithium rich phase grows uh, or shrinks at the expense of the other one. Okay, so with the language of the cartoon that I was mentioning before, uh, the what you should obtain is something like that with the uh, two plus uh, segregating uh, in one side of the sample and uh, leaving the rest in the three plus uh, state for the transition method. Uh, that also means, uh, uh, I mean, this is prohibitive to simulate ab initio because we would need a huge uh, cell and uh, you would get into uh, with periodic codes. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, very challenging. Um, but uh, what, what this implies is that uh, whenever you have an intermediate phase, I mean, an intermediate concentration of lithium, either ordered or disordered, you should get at least uh, uh, this phase have a positive. Uh, uh, energy compared to the ingredient that you use to 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 apply that. So basically, if you you get if you compute the formation energy uh, using this formula, you should get uh, this formation energy compared to the energy of the two, you know, and the member should be positive. That means that this uh, this intermediate phase uh, are unstable compared to the system, you know, the precipitating the uh, in the two, uh, in the two phases containing only two plus and three plus uh, transition metal ions. And also, um, we would uh, we would have to obtain that uh, the average voltage uh, has to be accurate whenever we compute it using only the two plus and three plus for the reason I was mentioning before. Okay, so this is a sort of uh, uh, problem that we are trying to tackle uh, with, uh, with our DFT calculations. Now, how we will focus first on the cobalt uh, member of this family. How do we measure uh, when, uh, when a transition metal ion is two plus or three plus? We count basically the electrons uh, on the these states of this transition metal. These are uh, 3D transition metals, so typically they have four, uh, two four S electrons. Uh, and then a, a various number of 3D electrons. So cobalt has seven 3D electrons, so the two plus should have uh, seven uh, D electrons and uh, three plus should have six. So uh, we count these D electrons by projecting the quantum uh, states, uh, this C chi D uh, of given spin sigma on the uh, um, atomic orbitals of the cobalt, specifically the D atomic orbitals of the cobalt. Now, this is not the only choice possible. We could project on any other localized state like Panier function, like uh, uh, Gaussian if we have, or whatever uh, is more uh, uh, suitable for, uh, for your for your code that you have. But now, uh, in the quantum express, we use uh, um, uh, atomic states possibly orthogonalized between uh, uh, neighbor atoms. And this is uh, the, the formula we use in to, to calculate this projection. So let's look at what uh, the what the what these numbers look like for uh, uh, the deviated and vitiated uh, cobalt uh, phosphates. 
So you see that uh, here we should have uh, um, two plus, uh, that as I mentioned before, should have seven electrons and uh, gets uh, 7.35. I mean, this number does not uh, uh, sharply on, uh, on, uh, on our expectation, chemical expectation. And um, instead of six, we get set 7.06. Uh, doesn't matter much uh, as long as uh, the the two plus and three plus are also predicted by the same more or less the same numbers also in uh, in between, which is not the case. I mean, if we use a uh, approximate exchange correlation function like the one that we get from MDA or GGA, we get uh, uh, intermediate numbers here. That means that we are not predicting uh, localization of those electrons. Uh, we get instead, uh, uh, in spite of an ordered phase of the lithium ions, uh, we get spreading of the D electrons across all the transition metals that we have uh, in the sun, which is not consistent with uh, with uh, with experiments, uh, especially because uh, uh, we get uh, you know negative formation energy instead of positive and. Uh, significant underestimation of the average voltage that we get from the uh, from the calculation. <clears throat> so uh, the way we correct this with the uh, Hubbard correction uh, is uh, introducing a, a, an Hubbard uh, a functional, a corrective function inspired by the Hubbard model. As many of you probably know, the Hubbard model is very simple in that uh, it contains only two parameters in its simplest version. That is the opening parameter, which is uh, the, basically the bandwidth uh, that we have in, uh, in our system, and uh, electron electron interactions uh, that are limited to, to uh, only the difference from zero when the two electrons are on the same side. Okay. Now, uh, despite its simplicity, this, uh, um, this Hamiltonian is flexible enough to capture uh, uh, localization of electrons when. Uh, uh, electron electron interaction is strong enough. So there is a, um, if, uh, I mean, if uh, for uh, uh, relatively small values of the uh, electron repulsion, you can get the usual band picture back um, with uh, metallic ground state uh, and a half field bands. Uh, yeah. If you uh, increase the value of U compared to T, the, the the hoping uh, at certain point you make the transition to a localized state in spite of the fact that the, in, a, in a band picture you still have a, a count of electron that suggests a half filling of the band so in a, in a band uh, picture language you would still have a metallic uh, ground state here you get instead uh, localization just because uh, electrons uh, repel each other so strongly when they are on the same side that they don't have enough kinetic energy to overcome this repulsion. Okay, so they stay localized on their own uh, atoms on the uh, sides. So the idea uh, is uh, to embed, uh, let's say, this model into the DFT and have this uh, um, this uh, 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 model, this uh, Hamiltonian work for uh, uh, localized states, uh, basically our D states. Okay, in our system. Um, so these have been done uh, uh, in the early 90s, uh, was, being, was introduced in the early 90s, and basically all this boils to is uh, to have, uh, uh, to add basically a correction that resembles the, the, the upper Hamiltonian we just saw in the previous slide uh, as a function of those occupations that uh, uh, I showed you before some slide uh, ago, and to take off uh, uh, from this sum uh, this uh, um, uh, Another energy that basically uh, avoids that the, the what we are here in terms of electron electron interaction is that counted twice because of pieces that are already inside the um, contained in the standard DFT function. It's called double count. Now there's many uh, many. Uh, formulation of this uh, of this uh, functional one of the most convenient one is the so-called rotational invariant one that was introduced in '95 by Lichtenstein and his co-workers and here's the hardly folk like expression that they used. We will uh, mostly focus on a simplified version of it, uh, which is the, also the one uh, uh, that represents the reference uh, implementation in quantum espresso. The rest is expression. The rotational invariant. Uh, because it's based on the trace of this uh, uh, combination, 
for this uh, product of matrices. Uh, but uh, as, a, as a simple expression, it only depends on this parameter, which is the, the upper the, uh, interaction. Okay. So this is the one that we will refer to. And, uh, and uh, again, let me stress once more that uh, it acts selectively on, uh, on the V-states, on the localized manifold uh, that we decide to guide on. Uh, in our case, uh, the V-states of transition metal ions, so the ones that are depicted here, okay? Um, and, and that's done exactly through this projection that are the ones that, that, that I introduced uh, a few slides ago. How does it work? Well, uh, in order to understand well, as I to review it, uh, how it works, uh, it's convenient to use a, a diagonal basis. Since it's rotational invariant, uh, it doesn't matter what basis we use. Uh, so we choose uh, the, the diagonal one for the, for the occupation. Um, and uh, in this diagonal form, the, 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 the correction to the energy is uh, expression lambda times one minus lambda, where lambda is uh, the occupation of uh, of uh, these uh, on-site matrices. The potential, the, the contribution to the potential that we extract from this uh, correction as, uh, as is this form instead. And as you see, whenever lambda is larger than one half, so the, the, the specific state that we're considering in this uh, projection is more than half occupied, this potential is attractive, okay? So lower, it tries to lower the, 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 the energy level. While instead, uh, whenever this uh, lambda is uh, lower than the one half, uh, it becomes repulsive, it becomes positive. So you get uh, basically the effect of a scissor operator acting uh, around the Fermi level because around the, the let's say, the, the, the levels that are half occupied, okay? That's the, the threshold. So you get a situation like this uh, that uh, uh, most likely will help you opening gaps. So, so basically the effect uh, that you will see in, uh, in the spectrum of, uh, of the system is, uh, is something like this. You might be getting uh, um, metallic behavior, let's say, for, uh, for transition metal compounds with uh, D many D states around the Fermi level. If you apply this, uh, this type of correction, you typically end up, and you will see this afternoon, uh, with a uh, band structure that looks like this, uh, and you the you get the opening of a gap or a uh, gap enlarging around the Fermi level just because of the effect of this uh, uh, corrective uh, upper potential. Okay. So uh, let's go back to our uh, uh, reference material. How does it work if you apply this correction to the cobalt uh, uh, phosphate? We start from this, uh, from this result that we already know from a few slides ago. And now if we apply uh, the, this upper correction, uh, we get a much better pitch in terms of uh, uh, representation of two plus and three plus. So you see that the numbers uh, have changed for the end member two plus and three plus in terms of uh, occupation of these states, but uh, almost also more importantly, the, the intermediate lithium uh, cons at intermediate lithium concentration we get uh, basically uh, what is called a chart disproportionation. Okay, so the, the cobalt that's closest to lithium uh, gets into uh, the, the two plus state, <coughs> while the one that's farther apart still stays in the, in its three plus. And two plus and three plus have a similar number of the electrons uh, as. Uh, the two end members, where well, you only have either two plus or three plus copper. And correspondingly, also the energy, the energetics has improved. In fact, you see a positive formation energy for this uh, uh, ordered uh, intermediate phase with two plus and three plus. And correspondingly, uh, this has been beneficial also for the energetics of the two end member because if uh, if I measure, if I calculate uh, the average voltage between these two extremes, uh, uh, I get a much better agreement with the spectrum than, uh, than I had before. Okay, so I improve also that aspect. Now, uh, if one tries the same thing with another member of the family, basically the one based on manganese, one can try exactly the same uh, the same trick. And uh, of course, we are, we start from a from a situation that doesn't satisfy us because in uh, two plus and three plus are not well represented in comparison with the with the pure materials. 
but uh, if you if you apply the the same uh, you know correction you end up with a, with a description not completely satisfactory uh, because you see that um, number of the uh, electrons compared to the ones that you get for the purely two plus and three plus states uh, is not very is not very accurate and also the energetics is not that great in fact you get uh, 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 <laughs> A much worse agreement with, uh, with the experiment for uh, reducting the, the, the average voltage from, uh, from these materials. So uh, what is going on here is that the, the usual uh, uh, corrective function is not flexible enough for, the, for this type of uh, 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 material. And what we did then uh, is uh, to extend a little bit uh, to add another term to the to the corrective Hamiltonians and include uh, specifically the inter-site interaction of non electrons. Okay, so this V term uh, that uh, will define the plus C plus P uh, functional is nothing else than uh, the, the interaction between uh, electrons that are on uh, neighbor sides you know, of our parties. Now, you can do the same algebra as before, and you get uh, a generalized corrective function that looks like this. And you get uh, also, you, you, you need to extend a little bit the definition of the occupation matrices because you need to have uh, also intersite uh, terms. So you see this i is different from j. And uh, basically, you get two terms. So the, one, the first one that is before uh, wants tries to localize electrons on the same uh, atomic site, okay? Tries to get the integer creation of, uh, of atoms, uh, single atoms for transition metal. The other one instead, uh, you see as a minus in front, uh, tries to localize the, to localize states that have uh, uh, significant hybridization between uh, uh, neighbor atoms. So try to stabilize a uh, uh, a different pattern of localization where you have localization of electrons for possibly on bonds, for example. Okay, so so this is the difference from before, and of course the competition between these two uh, terms uh, allows more flexibility. So you can uh, capture a, a different regime of localization going from atomic to to bond-like, let's, let's say, uh, localization of electrons. And uh, so this is the, 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 the corrective Hamiltonian that uh, I just uh, I just show you. And uh, a typical example uh, uh, we can uh, we can think of for for, uh, for the application of the Hamiltonian as for example um, uh, band semiconductor, so silicon and gallium arsenide. You see the V is being applied uh, uh, between the nearest neighbor. Okay, in these cases, or uh, uh, again, transition metal oxides, for example, or compounds in general, where, however, you see that the D is between uh, uh, um, the transition metal and it's a neighbor oxygen because typically the first neighbor of uh, transition metals and transition metal is usually in a cage of an ion, basically, in these uh, compounds. But you will see. Um, uh, also in this afternoon to how to achieve this. So uh, we'll talk about the application of this scheme to the uh, band semiconductor a little bit later. Uh, let's uh, let's see how it works uh, for the manganese uh, uh, material that I was uh, just mentioning before. And you see the, that the, the agreement is now much better than before in terms of uh, number of the electrons such as two plus and three plus. So this, uh, the inclusion of uh, the inter-site uh, interaction improves a lot in the, the way you represent uh, two plus and three plus and makes it consistent with what you have uh, for the fully uh, delithiated and fully lithiated uh, uh, materials. And also the, the energy has improved because uh, now the, the, the voltage, the average voltage uh, can be computed uh, with a uh, with a much uh, better new experiment. Um, the same thing happens with the iron one. The iron is the commercially available uh, nowadays for the charge of lithium batteries, 
And you see, it, it was good already with the on BFT plus U only, so the only the, the on-site correction, but improves a little bit with the, if you uh, include the inter-site one, and uh, the voltage is a little bit better than it was before. Okay. So the, it's a refiner. When when uh, when uh, everything works already with the on-site only correction, typically the, the inter-site uh, uh, can refine uh, on, quantitatively the description that you already got. <clears throat> and we did with Yuri uh, also a uh, more complicated case where we mixed uh, iron and manganese. And so you have the extra complication that uh, the, the first was to oxidate must be one instead of the other, so it's uh, it's more uh, more challenging than it was the, for the pure uh, stuff. But uh, I don't have time to to go into details of these other uh, case studies. So now, what I want to uh, discuss a little bit uh, is uh, uh, the practical framework of this uh, that I'm presenting now. Uh, also, to be able to understand under what condition we can expect it to work well and uh, what we should uh, do for it to work well and uh, how well can we expect to, uh, to, to work, how effective we can expect it that fit. So, whatever is the upper function of correcting, uh, the delocalization of self interaction error co versus or correlation, and uh, uh, also, what would a strongly correlated ground state look like uh, within XR TFT? That's the problem that maybe we're talking here. And uh, and specifically, what uh, the role is of symmetry and symmetry breaking for this uh, for this system. Now, this is a, a debated topic in literature. These are two uh, recent papers, relatively recent papers from 2020 and 2021 by basically the groups of uh, John Perdue here and Alex Zunger here that uh, have also been uh, the, the author of uh, one of the first paper on us uh, interaction correction in the earlier 80s. And um, yeah, uh, they, they are I mean, discussing these kind of topics, especially the role of uh, symmetry and symmetry breaking in order to get uh, a good description for from the FT of correlated ground states. So uh, this is also a topic that was uh, uh, being investigated in, uh, in the early 80s, uh, for example, by the group of uh, John Perthew, uh, when they were discussing uh, uh, the applicability of PFT to, um, let's say, a situation with a, a fractional um, number of electrons. How do we understand the fractional number of electrons? So basically, uh, as a fractional number of electrons, you have uh, your system and it's able to, to uh, exchange electrons with a reservoir. Uh, basically, a fractional number of electrons on the system must be understood as, a, let's say, uh, an ensemble of a state with uh, one extra electron um, with a, one electron removed from the system or one electron added to the system. Okay. So a linear combination between uh, uh, these uh, three states can give you uh, a good representation of what uh, uh, a fractional number of electrons uh, uh, state should, should be for, uh, for the system in that you're considering. However, since it's, a, um, <laughs> since it's a, a, an ensemble of states, the energy, the energy of the of the system should look like a, a, a should be linear as a function of the number of electrons that you have, and you will see more of these uh, tomorrow with the upper uh, with the, uh, the Kupferman's function. Now, this uh, uh, this linearity has an important uh, um, implication, let's say, for the physical quantities that you can extract from your calculation, specifically the uh, discontinuity of the. Uh, chemical potential, which is the first derivative of the energy profile, uh, is uh, uh, so the so called fundamental band gap or the difference between uh, ionization potential and electron affinity. So, missing this, uh, this behavior means that you are also not so accurate in describing this fundamental gap for, uh, for your system. Now, um, 
how well do we represent this kind of situation with approximate function? Not very well, because uh, you have uh, typically the energy profile as a function of a number of electrons is, uh, is continuous. Doesn't show that cusp, but doesn't show linear sequence of linear segments and uh, misses uh, the, the jump in the first derivative that's so important from the point of view of quantities that you are uh, representing. So you have an extra curvature that shouldn't be there and uh, uh, compromises a little bit the, uh, the quality of prediction that you can, uh, that you can get uh, uh, from these approximate functionals. Um, how do we, can we read this, uh, this uh, residual, uh, this uh, physical curvature of the, of the total energy? Well, it can be understood as a, as a, as a residual self-interaction of the electrons, right? And, uh, and this self-interaction is what, exactly what leads, uh, uh, what encourages electrons to spread out more than they should in the system because they interact with themselves and they shouldn't. And so they break in pieces, uh, and this piece wants to be as far apart uh, as possible from, from each other. <clears throat> that shouldn't happen. So uh, we try to correct. And uh, if you if you remember now the expression of the corrective function of the Albert uh, correction that I've been discussing so far, uh, this is this has exactly the um, the, 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 the right. Uh, expression in order to, to do this job, right? So if you suppose the, the total energy as a parabolic behavior, this, uh, this correction here is exactly what you need in order to get out from the parabola the, the curvature and recover a, a sequence of linear segments, okay? Uh, provided that the U is, uh, is the curvature, a measure or an estimate of the curvature of, that you want to get rid of. Okay, so this is exactly what we're doing. So basically, uh, the ABBA correction helps you uh, um, taking, off, taking out of, from your calculation uh, the residual self-interaction. It does in an average way, in an in a atomic-like way, but uh, this is what, what it does. And it does also for extended system. Of course, we don't have a, a, an isolated system in contact with the reservoir. We have, a, uh, let's say, localized states uh, that can change electron with the rest of the system that uh, acts like uh, the reservoir, like the bath, uh, or the uh, wimmers, uh, this, uh, this uh, system of localized states. OK, so, so this. Uh, it turns out to be possible, what I just mentioned, if uh, symmetry allows, okay? So in the cases that we've been looking at uh, previously, the one pertaining to the family of uh, battery materials, we were sort of lucky because uh, the, the lithium in the structure basically breaks the symmetry, okay? You, you, you have lower symmetry just because lithium is, uh, is occupying a fraction of the possible uh, size that it can occupy. Uh, the, the symmetry being lower uh, helps the electrons uh, uh, to, to localize if they want. Of course, you, you need, uh, as you saw, uh, you need uh, this extra correction for that localization to be, to be effective. It doesn't happen by itself because the functional is, uh, because the functional is approximate, okay? But uh, the, the symmetry requirement uh, has to be satisfied. I mean, what this means is that uh, in cases where you get uh, um, sort of metallic uh, uh, reference by symmetry, uh, doesn't mean that the system is really metallic. It might be the, the, the over the resonance, as can say, between uh, uh, different uh, localized uh, configuration. Now, uh, for an approximate function, it's very difficult to recognize this kind of uh, situation. So to recognize whether a uh, 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 ground state that looks like metallic is really metallic rather than uh, 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 a combination of, uh, of uh, more localized ground states. And that's what makes uh, uh, the, the use of uh, approximate function problematic for these kinds of uh, so-called strongly correlated materials.
So um, after you you get an intuition of how to break or lower the symmetry of the system, as I mentioned before, you still need a function of the types electrons to localize because again, the most of the approximate exchange correlation function are uh, uh, basically constructed with a reference to the uh, homogeneous electron gas, so they like uh, the, the, the the spreading of electrons more uh, than they should. Okay. And so you need some correction. So basically, what that's what uh, the, this plus U correction is doing. So it's helping the localization of electrons uh, whenever symmetry allows you. And in some cases, you need to understand uh, or need to break the symmetry in uh, by hand, uh, as uh, as uh, for example the case of iron oxide that was uh, also mentioned uh, in uh, Stefan's talk. Uh, so you get uh, in iron oxide, you get this. Um, I don't know probably time to go into much of the details. You get this rock sub structure, but uh, with um, with antiferromagnetic order, and gives you, of course, a metallic ground state, uh, which is not uh, consistent with the experiment, just because the, the minority spin the electrons is sitting on a double de degenerate state. Now, with the blind application of you, you may localize these, uh, these electrons onto this uh, single state here, mm -hmm. but turns out that it's not uh, the right thing to do. I mean, not the lowest energy mm -hmm. thing uh, states that you can get, but the lower energy one uh, instead can be achieved by an orbital ordering uh, that uh, implies, uh, requires actually uh, a, a, a super cell that's three times as big as the, as the, as the unit cell we have in the Proxal structure of the system. So you break the symmetry between these two states, and once we occupy one, then the other one, the other times you occupy the other, you get a number of uh, equivalent and the generate uh, uh, solutions. And uh, the original situation has to be understood as a sort of uh, uh, inner combination of those solutions. There are even more complicated cases like magnetite, where you have a hydral site. Uh, uh, being half occupied by two plus and three plus, uh, but the structure is so symmetric that you don't have a, a clear way to, to understand uh, uh, which one is which. And uh, on the other hand, if you don't uh, localize electrons, you, you, you of course uh, achieve a, um, a metallic ground state and then let, that makes you miss uh, the, for example, important features uh, like uh, of the behavior of this material, like the verbe transition to an insulating ground. So this is a very, very challenging case. So a take home message, this is a complete my presentation, is uh, that uh, with respect to um, uh, doing simulation on correlated materials, uh, using DFT is a little bit like uh, living in flatland, right? Because we'll, uh, we live in this project, single body projection of the reality. And now from there to reconstruct what's in the third dimension, the one that we projected along, it's not, uh, it's not very easy. I will use a, a, a drawing that also got from the John Perdue uh, paper, the one I was uh, referring to before that said that uh, we are like sort of uh, blind, but we are touching different parts of the elephant and we need to put those, uh, those sensation together in order to get uh, a better picture of what we are, uh, we are experiencing. So um, I will just leave with you the uh, final consideration that the upper correction can be uh, useful to, Im to improve the description of ground state uh, with localized electrons uh, whenever symmetry allows that localization order uh, after you uh, um, allow this localization by breaking or lowering the symmetry. And the FT plus U mostly corrects uh, the, the delocalization self-interaction error uh, in correlated ground state, uh, symmetry must be broken first. So if you have a, uh, you want a uh, better energetics for a correlated system, uh, uh, that the, uh, this correction can help you provide that uh, you get uh, to break the symmetry or lower the symmetry appropriately uh, before applying. And uh, plus, you is a useful extension of what you have with only the on-site term. 
and can capture uh, hybridization and uh, this general uh, um, correction is a broadly equivalent to uh, approaches like hybrid functional or set interaction correction that uh, you also uh, may know of, uh, from the literature. The effectiveness or how good these, uh, these uh, results are, uh, of course, depends on uh, the value that you pick for U and V and all the parameters that you have in the, in the, the calculation. But for this, uh, we need to wait until uh, for the next author by Uh Last, I want to thank you for, uh, what is the second picture? <laughs> Did I hear it? <laughs> ah, okay. I want to thank you. For, uh, for your attention, and also want to advertise a uh, uh, postdoc position that we have uh, with a colleague in Milan to work on top, you know, on this topic, the Caraiti induced pin selectivity that's recently found funded by the Italian Ministry. So, if anybody's interested, please get in contact with me. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Matteo. So we have time for questions from Marazzo. Yeah, from okay. uh, No, so, so, so I don't know if you've seen this uh, paper by Christian Allen, which uh, they do the theory on uh, iron oxide. Um, it's a it's a natural computation one. They do, they do iron oxide, magnesium oxide, from okay. the oxide, nickel ah, oxide, okay. monoxide. Yeah. And uh, so the interesting part uh, is the fact that uh, they do it uh, with a uh, single cell. So they do it with, uh, with uh, orthorhombic, I guess, uh, primitive, uh, typical primitive cell, the one that uh, is seen experimentally, let's say. So, um, so, so, so the point is that, uh, so would you say that, uh, so in my opinion, only one of the Two things is correct. So either you are correct in some sense. So either the cell must be so that the symmetry has to be broken spatially. The cell must be bigger, and you have uh, the, 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 you observe the constituent you observe, or you need a different function. Let's say the, the use of the DMFP uh, procedure. Let's say the DMFP format. So I wonder. So do you have any opinion on how would someone address this thing? Because of course, looking at the band structure, it's a bit uh, tricky because from BFP, of course, the dynamic is different. You can back up, it makes sense. So in BFP, it's a bit complex. So I don't want to look at it. I don't want to say, okay, it's a metal, it's in this way. I, do, I, I want another marker, all right? Another ground state marker that actually has me sees. What is the right picture? Do you have any opinion of the business marker? Uh, I understand the question. So uh, I haven't read that paper, so I should do uh, <laughs> read that paper. I'm not sure the NFT uh, contains in itself. If used on a single cell, a single unit cell contains information that can relate to supercell or a possible way to break the scene from there. So I suspect that if they didn't do anything, uh, it might not have yeah. the current state accounted for. Uh, this being said, uh, I don't know. No, because it's it's a fundamental question. Yeah, no, no, no. I, it's, it's, I, it's, I, I think it's the most fundamental question that, that we need to address right now. Also, also, but that by the time when yeah. we did, uh, I mean, we were looking uh, uh, for this uh, other ground state just because uh, um, when we got the let's say the trivial one, uh, uh, exactly. The, so the behavior under pressure was not right. It was not uh, consistent with the experiment. So we said, uh, well. Is not right. I mean, probably the material is not behaving like this. Uh, or the, the localization of electrons on these states is not uh, is not the one that um, should be achieved. And uh, we looked for um, breaking of symmetry, uh, and we found this one. Uh, it was pretty clear, actually. Uh, it's not uh, what I remember is that once uh, once you distort to 
the cell a little bit, actually the atomic position a little bit to get this uh, new ground state. And then you get there and then you let the, the position relax. It wants to go back to the symmetric one. It doesn't want to, doesn't want to stabilize that uh, distortion. So I'm not sure what to say yeah. <laughs> at the end. I mean, one would need to try the NFT on this uh, other ground state and see mm -hmm. if it gets anything there. I think the statement will be probably yeah, I know, just commenting on yeah. this situation. So maybe what yeah. happens is that I mean the LDA plus U or refined theory are static in a certain sense. The breaking of symmetry means that there are many equivalent uh, broken symmetry, and what actually happened, maybe this is what uh, the MFT or other theory may do, is to do this uh, dynamically. And so in the end, maybe the structure is not broken because uh, the breaking is dynamic in a certain sense. I don't know, I mean, this is, in certain cases, uh, yeah, it's always uh, uh, the same. I mean, you make the <laughs> hydrogen, uh, hydrogen molecule dissociate, you have the broken symmetry, Phase, uh, which is wrong, uh, but to change the fact that the electrons localize. If you try to do it with a symmetric uh, yeah. uh, solution with uh, one uh, single slated determinant, it's completely wrong. Uh, so you better break the symmetry and then say, okay, the reality is something more complicated because the system is not determined. So I don't think yeah. this may be a uh, certain put together. Mm -hmm. the yeah, <laughs> I also have a, I mean, I basically agree. I have my own language, I would say, in, in, in all of this. I think uh, I find it very helpful uh, if people were to think at the same that you have two plus two that you have presented, uh, not so differently from a hybrid. Uh, I mean, it's sort of correct self interaction, it's much less expensive. And it can be more accurate because uh, you know the screening uh, is actually gauged uh, by your uh, sort of your inner response uh, you. Yeah. So in all those cases uh, where the self interaction is clear, there are localized electrons. Uh, you know probably this is the best of that that we have. Yeah. And then uh, and in, because in that sense, I mean, it's interesting the perspective of Zunga and so on, but it's very confusing because they mention you. Know, well, instead, you know, what Zunger does is basically dynamical correlation with ensembles, or you could do dynamical correlation with a primitive cell and just a frequency dependent uh, potential of self energy or uh, with the DNFT. And uh, none of the Zunger approach will actually attack strong correlations that the NFT is able to do in principle on the side that yeah. the NFT reference card. So yeah, my uh, yeah, and, and to agree in the sense that my impression is that the NFT uh, does uh, does contain some strong correlation, but also on on the same side. Yeah. That's right. I mean, if uh, yeah, I mean, gets only what he puts in. I mean, uh, but the stuff that Zunger also. And just to sort of describe it, yeah. it's not strong correlation, it's a dynamical correlation. Um, you can get a, a Zunger does a super cell source, yeah. yeah. It does an ensemble uh, of things localized yeah. in different places, yeah. Uh, but every sort of uh, localized thing uh, doesn't describe the on site strong correlation because it's a Better. It's a GGA calculation in this case. It would be much better if you were to do a GGA calculation because they you would correct the self interaction. The yeah, system. yeah, but I guess uh, the um, I'm a little confused about the 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 jargon in the sense that uh, this is uh, what I understood the chemist would call a static correlation on the. The break of symmetry no, because it could be a multi reference, yeah, exactly. So, and Zuga doesn't capture the multi reference, nature. but that's I mean, the doing the, the supercell and breaking the symmetry in some way and trying to order either the charge or the or the orbitals. Uh, I understand, like, uh, I'm getting one reference of the multi reference, uh, ground state. I, I don't think so. I mean, that's more what in alloy theory 
people do such activity in the, you know, the CPA versus the super cell, the frequency dependent potential versus the super cell. Um, so it's my understanding that when you use DF two plus U, um, there are some complex artifacts in the form of additional method state and states. Then it is what you sorry. Additional method state and states. Um, so that's my understanding. Uh, and there have been some methods developed to try and combat that, like new ramping or artificial mix control. Uh, are there any kind of thought that you think it is to use these methods to try and address that method in the problem? Yeah, there is sometimes this problem. Um, it can be important. I mean, if your system gets, uh, it's likely to get trapped in there. Um, I don't think we have uh, any automatic way to to solve that, that problem now, but um, yeah, it might be important. I mean, at least for being sure that you get in the the lowest energy state, or you have at least uh, an idea of the existence of a low, low energy one. So, this for maybe a quick one because, uh, also behind the breaking of the symmetry, and yeah, the mechanisms behind charge disproportionate emission that you showed. So, in principle, you said that. Just by the fact that you're adding the lithium atoms, it should break the symmetry, but the FT fails in sort yeah. of localizing the electrons. Yeah. My question is uh, when you include the FT plus U, do you have to ensure that do you need different U bodies for the different ions? Yeah. To to localize the uh, no, but they come out different if you, if you compute them. So you, know, you will see in the next talk yeah, how yeah. to compute them. And so if you compute them uh, from uh, for intermediate lithium, they, I mean, the, you, you will distinguish two plus and three plus also mm -hmm. no, because yeah. of the U, a different U. So like if you would, would compute them through linear response and you get to different values because they're going to be equivalent in the yeah. But if you were to choose the average value for all the items, yeah, I guess you still look a lot. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you don't get the same numbers, but so we are adopting a rotationally invariant formulation. So, um, my question is when and how much would it be important to consider the non invariant, non rotationally invariant formulation? Uh, not taking the break of 44. So uh, how important is that to so this uh, I don't get that to the question. So the most very important the most very important. I mean the full non uh, uh, the rotation invariant formulation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it the same? Ah, the simplest, ah, okay. The simplest version versus the non rotation form. Okay. Uh, most cases, I mean, there are. Uh, Close to this part. There are some cases where uh, it is important to have a, um, a more detailed formulation uh, of the more extensive, the diatric of like the uh, easy kind of formulation. Um, I don't remember what's the, the, the type of uh, system that would need that. Uh, Occasionally, yeah, and you get better description with the full the full language. Then you need to choose another parameter with this J and then this kind also depend on this second answer and Okay, do I think that there are a number of other comments that have been made and the discussion from let's respond to the coffee break. Let's take again. Yes.